Welcome to a podcast of total terror. Night of the Nerdy Laser. A podcast which celebrates films of horror. Night of the Nerdy Laser. A night with a podcast that won't stay dead. A podcast of total horror. Night of the Nerdy Laser. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Night of the Nerdy Laser Podcast. I was trying to make it sound rock, but instead it went total macho man. Yeah, okay. it, was, so, it was a wrestling <laughs> promo cut. <laughs> Can you blame me? Okay, tonight, guys, with, this is episode 75. I'm Matt Henry. I am Richard. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe to this video. Yule? <laughs> I'm Jeff Lowne. <laughs> and tonight is Richard's pick, and we're watching Deathgasm, spelled all capitals because lowercases is for pussies. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, um, yeah, Matt has a little bit of a ch- setting. Uh, setting. He's, well, he's the creepy old I'm man rocking the it. Rocking I'm rocking it for this rocking ass movie. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we for December we picked like Christmas presents to ourselves, like movies we just wanted to watch. And I, I usually, if given the opportunity, try to pick a movie I haven't seen just because. And so this was uh, this was one of those instances where I I try to look on Tubi, so it's easy for everybody to watch if they want to, and uh, not non-existent like uh, Dead and Breakfast. <laughs> and uh <laughs> which you have to bring to me man <laughs> friday bring okay it to me. i'm bringing it um so uh <laughs> so yeah that's gasm i heard about it it was for, it's from 2015 new zealand i think um it's a movie comedy demons it's i can describe this this is is real easy i can sum it up in three movies all combined okay this is evil dead 2 this is evil dead 2 this is scott pilgrim versus the world with a little bit of goonies thrown in there because it's losers you know but it's (laughs) it's it's got the scott pilgrim vibe because they're you have all the title things that are constantly popping in and around them um and and all the um all the stuff is very Sam Raimi esque. The zooms, the the gore, uh, just the, the demons. They even do like the demon, and they just kind of float across the floor. Um, so th- that's what it felt like to me. Was like a metalhead version of Evil Dead Two and Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, I really liked the beginning of, like, the first 30, 40 minutes I thought was really solid. It was really funny. I mean, there were some really funny parts in it. Uh, I was talking to our pal Jason down at the dungeon, and he kind of, so what I don't like about this movie is actually what happens apparently in real life, according to him. Um, <laughs> whereas these are metalheads, like, and they're assholes to each other and and whatever, like, um, this, that's just what they are. Um, so you basic and it's basically Harry Potter. You can put Harry Potter into that mix too, because his his mom, his dad is dead, I think, and his mom is uh, in jail, and uh, Harry Harry Potter's parents were killed. But uh, anyway, he's sent to his aunt and uncle's house who hate him, just like okay. Harry Potter, yes. and then the, the cousin yeah. hates him. So that that situation was very Harry Potter to me, um, but uh, I I appreciate that the the cousin is an asshole. And one of the lines in the movie is he's hospitalized more uh, he's hospitalized more people than asthma, <laughs> more nerds <laughs> than <awesome>. asthma. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> is anyone at all versed in the Swedish death metal scene at all? The Norwegian black metal scene? Well, I'm sorry. 
Yes, Jeff. Thank you for correcting me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Norwegian, the Norwegian death metal scene. I'm sorry. Not me. I just sit over <laughs> here drinking my Aquafina water. <laughs> so my only issue with the Norwegian death metal scene is there was a band that kind of ruined it for everybody. And I can't remember their names, Jeff. Maybe you can toss it out there. But uh, all the, the, the band makeup. with the guy that they put his death photo on it he yeah as he killed himself and then they climbed into the room and took a photo of it and that was the cover of the yeah that was their that was their lead singer or whatever right Mm -hmm. but then they also went on to kill somebody and they burnt down a bunch of churches and good god uh, oh there's a movie about it and rory culkin plays the main uh, kid oh i've heard about that chaos yes lords Um, of chaos yeah 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 um and if you learn a little bit about the true story of just how messed up that whole scene is. So um, not maybe the whole mayhem. scene, but mayhem. There you go. And last um, podcast, last podcast did a really good uh, two or three episode series on the Norwegian black metal. Yeah. Because the guy got out of killing the other guy. They like went to his house ready. I mean, they had planned to go and kill this one guy and then they ended up shooting him or something. And it was, and they burnt down a bunch of tr- – I mean, it was just – so anytime I see that makeup, the first thing I think about is just raring, horrible assholes. <laughs> just, you know. They were kind of bad people, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, uh, and I do love – I love the corpse paint, though. I don't know what it is about it, but I do love corpse paint. <laughs> and – because that's what they call that black white paint, corpse paint. <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah. uh, they, uh, there was another one. I think maybe Bloody Disgusting was part of the – production of it or put it out but it was called uh heavy trip uh about mm-hmm. like a oh yeah girl. that one was pretty good too so i guess i guess i'm a sucker for any like i'm i'm, I'm assuming richard bailed out when the dildo concaved through the back of the guy's head <laughs> <laughs> is that whenever you said yeah. i'm good were, that's whenever i said were, I'm in. No, I'm <laughs> your, you, your video is so creepy because wherever you are, the connection sucks. So it's like we're watching like this, uh, you know, how like unfriended or whatever. <laughs> those things. So I'm skipping. Am I? Am I? Am I just what you're moving. It's fine. It's uh, fine. Okay, it's just, I think it's funny, but um, no, it's fine. Um, I don't know. You, you all know I can't stand where people are assholes to each other, like Guardians of the Galaxy and every Marvel movie and and just stuff. And, like, I have no reason to believe why any of these people would be friends. <laughs> but, I mean, because of Jason, I guess that's just the way it is. I just think it's funny that the two guys playing Dungeons and Dragons, they were nerds to the two musician guys. But mm-hmm. they also played music? I don't know. It just Well, he was a drummer. Drummers are a whole different breed of people. That's not I mean, literally drummers are a whole different breed of people. It's always the bassist and the guitarist that are assholes. Um pretty much. It's pretty much, yeah. Um, because the bassist wants to be a guitarist and the guitarist is just a guitarist. Um <laughs> so what I I like the dynamic about this movie and I the gore is next level in this movie. It's I mean, it's great. It's mostly all practical. I think there's like, like one or two digital shots and the digital ones are not very good. But I think some of the blood might practical. be. I think some yes. of the blood might be digitized, but I'm not sure on that. I'm and I love the girl. The way I loved the main the girl. girl was the was the ba- I think, yeah. I love I love the girl and I like at the beginning where he puts on the headphones and he transforms into a or transports into a music video an eighties music video and then well she then she does too her hers way. is like you know yeah hers she is first great. listens to it yeah that <laughs> never yeah. happens Girls. listen guys if you're a metal fan guess what's <laughs> never gonna happen. Your girl is not going to be a metal fan. Literally, this is how many girl metal fans I know. And I'm talking about heavy metal. That kind of metal? Lamb of God metal? That many girls are into that. And if (laughs) they say they are, it's just because their dude is. It's not the truth. It is funny because for some reason, I don't know, I've been listening to to Cannibal Corpse for the first time in my life. I've never really listened (laughs) to them. You've gotten into Cannibal Corpse just now. 
Well, they were in Knoxville last week, and Jason, me and Jason started talking about them, and because uh, he went to the concert. So, you know, whenever Jason goes to something, you know it's it's something near and dear to his heart because he doesn't he doesn't veer yeah. from the from the homestead too much. Um, He's like, we can get but, him to play uh, here at the dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know. I saw I come on blood and I just had to listen to him. <clears throat> well, okay. So or I come blood or whatever it's called. I come blood. Yeah. So, okay. This movie, the reason this movie even exists, the guy who directed this movie was also a digital artist and he did all the digital uh, special effects for like the Lord of the ring movies, the Hobbit movies. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So he loved doing like digital effects but he missed the glory days of like practical effects and he wanted to do something well um over there in his country norway correct jeff okay so over new there zealand. new zealand new i'm zealand. sorry new zealand uh there was a contest called make my horror film and this director entered in it's like you drop a concept you don't write a whole script you just you just you know put a, a concept down and he had like three concepts and he entered all three of them. And he was like, man, I hope the one that doesn't make it is Deathgasm because he <laughs> knew it would just be a nightmare, a practical effects nightmare to make the movie. And he entered into this contest and he ended up winning. And so the studio gave him, they were like, okay, well, you had the concept. Where's the script? So he had to write the script in nine days in which he says were the nine drunkest days of his life. Um <laughs> So he literally wrote this script in nine days, filmed the movie in 20 days. We're talking that's shorter than that's crazy. a Tremors sequel, you know, than it <laughs> takes to film a Tremors sequel. I mean, it's I mean, and he so he did all this in 20 days. Most of all the shots were like one takes. Right. And most of the actors in this movie came from um uh, they were filming in uh, in uh, over there a TV show called Power Rangers Ninja. So a lot of the actors from Power <laughs> Rangers Ninja are in this movie. It, it, it's, the funny. one main guy who is like the head of that company who forces them to <laughs> forces them to cut oh, off yeah. his head twice, which is like the do best. it again, do it again, and then the dude's like. <laughs> And he's like, they that's put better. The tarp down. That's better. Yeah, yeah, they put the tarp down. It's like you ruined a Persian rug. Um, so yeah, I mean, th this was literally this was it doesn't look bare bones though. To me, this I think it looks great. I think the movie looks really professional and I think it looks well done. Yeah, I it looks agree. like a, I mean it looks like a movie. Like it looks like something that doesn't that that you know you can show and not be embarrassed to, to show because it's not of... Velocipaster or something you know it's a you know <laughs> Wait, it's a movie but then, but then what is <laughs> but then what is yeah 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 um so anyways I'll quit gushing I'll let somebody else talk about it because I do have a few other thoughts on some of these kills here in just a little bit so <laughs> Richard go what ahead do you think, Jeff that. you saw this before us what did yeah you think? well I had seen it um gosh I, initially when it, came out on blu-ray i remember reading about it on like bloody disgusting or one of the websites again bloody good horror one of them i can't remember just that and i remember oh cool the corpse paint i'm in so <laughs> that was the first time i saw it. then joe bob i think joe bob aired it on one of his uh oh one of his seasons and hmm. i watched it then so this weird. Is my third time their time seeing it but i don't i don't think it loses anything upon rewatch which is weird because usually i'm either you know, I'm pretty down on movies second time around. I'm like, oh, that was really dumb. How did I like overlook something like that? But this one plays fine just because of how it is. So, well, I feel like if I had watched it, I watched it today and I was in a really shitty mood. So maybe, maybe it was a, because of my mood. But I mean, I liked it for the most part. I, I think once the, the kills start happening, I mean, there's really no story to it, so it drags a little bit for me. But I do love the <laughs> there. I, I love the drawing. Anytime there's drawing and and you know stuff like that on the screen, I, I really like that. I like the part where it's like heavy metal up your butthole. And it's like, yeah, that's yeah, a transitional so. shot. Yeah, <laughs> and it goes through the. The, 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 the o. o as the yeah 
Um, so there is a little bit of a story that they've cobbled together here. These group of kids, um, they want to break into the house of this legendary, you know, death metal singer. They go in there. He's sleeping. They steal this record. And inside of it, there's these pages written in Latin, which uh, translates to the black hymn. Um, and it'll give you power and it conjures demons it's very, again, it's Evil Dead. It's, you know, the kid tries to play it the first time, but he gets afraid or something, and he, he doesn't complete it. Um, but once he once they finally do, which is a scene that I love, whenever they finally open up, I don't know, the gates of hell, whatever it is they open up, <laughs> the garage door opens, and then the evil just spills out into the town. So then everybody yeah. just starts vomiting on each other, <laughs> you know, and the vomit doesn't end there. We go to school the next day and the teacher just projectile <laughs> vomits blood. But before he that, he sh yeah, go ahead, Richard. He, <laughs> he shits himself. <laughs> he shits blood. blood. It's he shits yeah. blood is pouring out of his ass. And then he just projectile vomits blood all on over this, this girl. girl's face for like two minutes it's well, what's ridiculous great, it's, it's a very family guy moment right because he vomits for like a minute and then stops and then starts again so <laughs> yeah it, it's it's i love that gag um i love the part <laughs> skipping forward just a little bit but we have the evil record label guy or whatever he is mm -hmm. and you find out he's not the real villain at the very end he's got this he like his uh this girl's going down on him underneath the desk at the very beginning. And at the very end, she like jams a sword down his throat and says, now who has the gag reflex? <laughs> it's great. Man, there's a lot of dick jokes, a lot of butthole yeah. jokes. There's dicks I mean, getting mangled. There's vibrators got, in the ears. There's, I mean. It's got to be it's the most nice. people slapped by dildos in a movie, in a, in a non-porno movie. I, guess. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I do. Uh, I really liked the scene where you know the like Scott Pilgrim nerdy feel kind of came out, where he's sitting on the bench with the corpse paint, and uh, the girls sitting there eating ice cream. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's very. That's very like Scott Pilgrim. Yeah. Yeah, but he's he's just sitting there so nervous, and <laughs> she's like asking him like into his music and stuff, and he's like, "Oh, here's these CDs." <laughs> he hands her the CDs, and it's all the worst stuff you could possibly look at. And then he gives her one. He's like, "Oh no, this one here." And I can't remember the <laughs> band, but it's just it was really good, like comedic timing on that. That's uh, actually my favorite scene of the movie because also as someone who is a metal fan myself and who goes to these shows, um. He explains why we like metal, and it's that he's right. He's, uh, you know, he tells she asks him, Why do you like this stuff? And he's like, Because when I'm having a shit day and I feel horrible and I feel like everyone's against me, I can turn on some metal and I realize that it, it's like this for someone else in the world too, and it and I relate to it. And you know, and it's, I, I mean, it was a really cute scene, it's probably the cutest scene in the movie. And it and it's it's kind of the director showing, hey, not all metalheads are assholes. That's just a facade that they have, you know, d you know that they put up. And you know, if you d dig down a little deeper, you know, we're just all people. Yeah. Yeah. Are we? <laughs> I hope we are. I hope your I'd head say isn't going to split open and an alien isn't going to crawl out. I'd say everybody except Jason down at the dungeon. <laughs> That's right. Uh, down at the dungeon, you can find all your favorite VHS tapes, DVDs, video games, and boutique Blu-ray and 4K, such as Vinegar Syndrome, Synapse, Severin, uh, he likes the uh, visual vengeance. Is that it, Jeff? Uh, Terror vision, all sorts of stuff down there. Uh, he buys, sells, trades, uh, and he's just a cool guy. Uh, one of the coolest. He'll just, he oozes machismo. Just uh, go down there and you'll get to see. He is the white machismo. Everybody go down there and fill up the... a cup of machismo, huh? Yeah, he is the white machismo. Um, 
So they're located in Maryville, Tennessee, but don't worry if you don't live here. Follow Southland underscore Dungeon, and you can um, see everything he posts. If he posts anything you like, um, go ahead and message him, and you can work that out, and you can get get a pretty good deal on it, uh, especially if you tell him we sent you. So uh, I think he's getting Silent Night, Deadly Night, uh, 3, 4, and 5, 4K? Blu-ray? Blu-ray. Blu-ray. Hell yeah. Why the hell can't they just put out 4K? Because that's more money they'll get in two years. <laughs> well, I don't know if I want those movies in 4K. I, some movies, I don't I don't really care if they're in 4K. I need that robotic Ryan now. It's not, it's not Avatar Way of the Water, okay? Or what? <laughs> I already have my I have my ticket for Thursday. You um, better buy three because he because <laughs> James Cameron will get you if you don't. Yes. Oh, hey. And speaking of James Cameron, and you know how I was complaining to you guys, the uh, we we're talking about something, and I was like, oh, I'm mad because he hasn't done the Abyss, and uh, oh yeah, it, it was on our last episode, I think. Yeah. But, uh, I saw a post come rolling up again and saying something about him working on the Abyss. Oh, that's cool. And I was like, yeah, about time. But I need that that true lies. I need that true (laughs) lies on 4K. You think that one would be an easy, I mean, that one's an easy grab. You got Arnold, you still got Jamie. They're both still famous. Why not? I mean, The Abyss? But I mean, I I like The Abyss. No offense. I'm just saying he would probably make more money releasing some kind of 4K special edition of True Lies. Yeah, plus Leviathan's better than the Abyss anyway. I said it. Is Leviathan with Peter Weller? I think. I can't remember the dude, but I know I like <laughs> it more than the Abyss. They're both good. I remember watching them, but I haven't seen either one in a really long time. Naked Lunch? Oh, the Burroughs book? No, it's a movie. It's Well, it's probably a book too, but Peter Weller's in it. Yeah, where the typewriter bugs and all that stuff. Yes, yes, yeah. Have you ever seen yeah, that? Yeah, it's so it's, weird. It's, it's a Burroughs, so based off of Burroughs, I think. Of course I haven't seen it. There's like hanging people with buttholes. I mean, but not where <laughs> their buttholes should be. Yeah, it's really weird. It's really weird. It's it's good, though. Um, yes, Peter Weller is in Leviathan. That's what I thought. Um, But I, I appreciate this movie because it does it does have really good comedy in it. And it does have, I mean, it has a story. I'm not saying it doesn't, but I just think that w- once the demons take over, there is less of a story. I mean, it's all, uh, it all goes to the practical effects. And I feel like it's the same practical effect every time for a while. And then you get the weed, weed eater to the crotch and... You know, I mean, you get a dildo in the mouth and you get two vibrators in the ear. I mean, well, how about when they're going through the parents drawer or whatever? And he's he's like, I think they're rosary beads because it says he pulls out a box that says church stuff. And and he pulls out the, the anal beads, and he's like, I think these are rosary beads. And then he pulls out the double thin dildo. Jesus. I mean, it's pretty funny, but I don't like the part where he, you know, the, the I don't know. I, it's just this problem I have where the guy's like, lies to the girl and says that the other guy's not interested and then they make out and hook up and like I just I mean maybe according to Jason down at the dungeon uh, that's just <laughs> the way it is but I just at least no, they made, made him the bad likeable. guy yes they did but it made the whole situation with all of them not nearly as likable um, and and you like her so much too because mm-hmm. she's I mean the one of my favorite deaths in the movie is where she saves the two boys. And drills oh. the one guy through the head, and it opens up to reveal her. And she's like, "I was gonna say something really quirky, like I'm here to ask you a question or something." And then no, they're like, "I think that's that a ass, great, you know, yeah, yeah." I think that's a great, great part. Um, no, and I really like her at the end when she's all metal and smoking cigarettes, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's called a fantasy guys <laughs> 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 they don't look like that 
not in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> unless That's not they true, are Matthew. the Stop singers, it. unless they are the female lead singers like Maria Brink <laughs> from In This Moment or some shit. So. <laughs> but, but yes, the gore though. One of the reasons, which, too, is that the I, I guess another reason why the gore and all the effects feel very similar to Evil Dead is because whenever this movie was being filmed. Um, the company that did the special effects for the Evil Dead TV show, like, loaned them all the prosthetics from that show. Mm. Oh, nice. So all the gore, all the prosthetics, everything that they used was stuff that had been used on the Evil Dead show, the Ash vs. Evil Dead show. Um, so, and I mean, that had to have been what this director was going for. He was like, I want to do Sam Raimi and Edgar Wright and just bring those so two things together. What I'll do, it's obviously a nod to, um, to dead alive. Yes. Yeah. I was actually, I mean, it's, yes, oh, it's yes. from there. I mean, it's gotta be a nod to like the, you know, the turned up blood, the, well, the power tools and, and one stuff used is like yeah. stuff to kill the demons. So, and just the over the top, like, eyes and makeup Aspect. reminded me a lot of it kind of um as well no i would totally agree definitely yeah i mean him being from new zealand i'd say peter jackson is a pre and him working on lord of the ring i mean i'd say that there's a pretty big influence there uh, across the board you know yeah and not only that i would say that because it is New Zealand and because he's a director that has like a different flavor, that's why this movie isn't like it stands apart from other movies that came out around that time. There wasn't really, I can't put my finger on it. It's not only because it's about that version of metal, but there's also just something kind of fun and whimsical. And maybe it's because he just came off of those Lord of the Ring movies, but the movie has scope. There's a part where we actually pull back and we see the town in ruins. So the movie, with being such a small budget and being filmed in such a short amount of time, feels much bigger and grander than what it is. Yeah, that, I mean, that's true. Like I said, I, I don't feel like this movie feels cheap at all. I mean, I don't know what the budget was, but... Um, yeah, it doesn't look cheap at all. It's it's a very well done movie. It's well acted. Um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a, that Power, it's a fine Power Rangers movie. cast, man. It's that Power Rangers <laughs> cast. Man. The um, but I think it's just where um, you know, I mean, I know the the whole heavy metal uh, vibe is not mainstream, but I think one of the reasons is. Like movies like this, it's harder to become mainstream. Like if you look at Stranger Things, like it's a likable cast. They're not assholes to each other. They're they're more like friends to each other, you know. And yeah. like and like they might be jerky to each other, like oh, farhead or whatever. But you know, I mean, they're not. They're not trying to fuck their girlfriends and stuff. dick bags. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. I think, you know, Jason is right. I think that's just how that, like, group of people are. Like, But I wonder if that the was... The rock a... scene guy, the rock, like, metal people. Yeah. It just kind of yeah. seemed that, that way, you know, based on the podcast, for just for that, like, Norwegian black metal scene, just what they did was kind of, like, petty, dumb stuff, and they didn't have a specific reason to do it. They just did it. And he even says that in the movie. He's like, I just did it because I was bored or... Because of an that is true. Said, so. I, I did like that at the end more, where he gave an excuse of just not really an excuse. Yeah. Well, even if you listen to the podcast about mayhem, it was like the reason they were burning down some of those churches wasn't even because they were, you know, they had some kind of strong, you know, uh, hatred towards, you know, the Catholic faith. But it's exactly what you just said. Like whenever they asked them why they did it, they're like, I don't know. I was, we were bored. We didn't have anything to do, you know? And maybe it's because over there, whenever they grew up, the Catholic religion was so oppressive. Maybe, I don't know, but it, some, that sometimes those groups of people, man, they just, they just do fucked up shit. They'd be fucked up <laughs> yeah, for no reason. I I mean, I've I toilet papered a house one time, and just because I was bored. 
Uh, I rolled a house, house one time because I was bored. So, <laughs> did you help him? Clean I didn't it know after? the people, huh? Did you help him clean it after? No. It's actually kind of no, no. It's actually kind of a fun story, but I'm not going to tell it. <laughs> Let's yeah. just say the cop. Let's just say the cops were involved, <laughs> and they knew it was you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> Do better at crime. Come on. Well, yeah. this is why I'm not a criminal. That was in my senior year of high school, and I was like, "Well, I'm out. I'm just, <laughs> I'll just be a, I'll just, you know, whatever through life." <laughs> uh, Double funny. chainsaws, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen. Double chainsaw kills. Chainsaws yeah. the, in the, the ass. Chain, chainsaw the, lollipops. Chainsaw. The part I don't like about why do why do I just don't understand why in movies they do this where they they show you a chainsaw and most people know how a chainsaw works and so while the chainsaw is on the floor the chain's just going and that's not how chainsaws work. <laughs> I like it's just really laying there with the chain going. It's like, but that didn't, that did not enhance the movie really at all. I can tell you're really passionate about Black and Decker. Um, <laughs> well, so... it just, if you're going to put a movie, it, it, you, it's, it's kind of one of those things. If you, That's if not you're how holding dildos a wand. work, Richard. <laughs> dildos don't go through the back of your throat. They go down it. They don't go through it. That's not well, I don't know. It depends on how hard you shove it, I guess, because that <laughs> thing was like three feet long. <laughs> uh, I The only thing I'll say to you bringing up that chainsaw chain thing is that we have to have our hero in peril or else what stakes do we have? So, mm, yeah, it reminds me of the scene in Point Break when the guy has the lawnmower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We should do Point Break. We just bring Point Break up as much as possible to piss Matt off. <laughs> Who I don't think has actually ever seen it. I've never seen it, and I've just seen like scenes. All the scenes I've seen are like Keanu Reeves chasing people through um, some kind of the sewage um, place, the the, yeah. the same <laughs> sewer, the same sewer that's in Terminator Two and Return to Living the Dirty. No, this was through like a beach <laughs> suburb or something. Like he was well, that too. There, there's and Gary well, Busey was through. like ah! he was freaking out <laughs> as he usually does. Utah, give me two. Yes, give me two. Utah. <laughs> Have you seen my dog anywhere? My dog. <laughs> <laughs> And then, yeah, and then the one film. guy, and then the other dude's all existential and ready to ride the wave of life. Bodie, sure. Patrick Swayze, Patrick Swayze. Yeah, I liked him much better in Dirty Dancing. I like. Oh Bodie. no, I think you should watch Point Break now. Um, it might mean a little bit more to you now. You might enjoy it more. You think so? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, let's do it next week. <laughs> <laughs> let's point break it up i'm ready to give it a half star we're gonna make you watch the remake though <laughs> that looked horrible the trailers right off the bat were people snowboarding i was like oh but, instantly but you know who was supposed to be Bodie in that movie who Gerard Gyar, butler and he would have been what? amazing yes he was supposed to be Bodie. You know who Gerard Butler is also amazing as? Dracula in Dracula 2000. Yeah, he is. I actually don't <laughs> like that That's a Have you never seen it, Richard? Oh, it's no. not good, but it's fun. It's not <laughs> good, but I love the twist where you, where you find out, spoilers, Dracula is Judas. They're the same yeah. person. The Fozzie song? No, Judas... <laughs> He's afraid of crosses. He was punished with eternal life. He doesn't like silver. I thought that was werewolves, but oh well, we'll go past it. Yeah, that's like one weird lore that seeps into both. Both. Uh, I mean, I watch a few monsters. movies a week now. I, I really do. And I really try to watch all these movies, but y'all just keep naming movies that I've not seen. <laughs> and like, I'm never going to catch up, and it pisses me off. It's, it's like, okay. How the hell? Now watch Dracula 2, The Ascension. It's also good. 
Dracula Because then you find 2? out more lore. Yeah, there's a sequel to Dracula 2000. It's called Dracula Ascension. And it's got Were they both vi- made for video? No, I, Dracula I 2000 Dracula was a big 2000 production. in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It, it it had Omar Epps in it. It was. It was. A little How old were you? Like six. It had the scumbag guy from that '70s show. Um, oh, Danny, Danny Masterson. Masterson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who just got uh, his ass out of trouble? Good job, Scientology. To, oh yeah, uh, yeah, he did. Yeah. What a um, what a piece of see. ass. Two thousand. I was 11, uh, 12. 12. I was twelve. <laughs> Who took you to see Dracula 2000? Probably my mom. I don't know. It's the perfect <laughs> kid she... movie, dude. It's not gory <laughs> at all. At Did all. she sit through the movie with you, though? I think. I mean, my... I usually... Need just, to... like, she took me to theaters. I would just... It was what... You know, I'd have to sit there with her, obviously, but... It might have been my dad or grandma. Or I just went. I don't I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, gosh. My, my dad mom took me my... to see... Um, House on Haunted Hill. Yeah. Now I watched that one on HBO. And that freaked me out because the whole, I think I told you guys about it, the whole digital creep walking thing they do. Hate it. Hated that as a kid. (laughs) Freaked me out. The, um, my mom took me to see Steel Magnolias and Parenthood. Great movies. Oh my God. I mean, Steel Magnolias is not a bad movie, but it's it's a weird one to say, you know. For an eight-year-old to sit through? (laughs) That's heavy. Even Parenthood. Parenthood is way more adult than you remember it being. I mean, what's her name is giving Steve Martin a blowjob while they're driving, (laughs) and he wrecks. (laughs) And then there's a vibrator that they turn on because they thought it was a flashlight. (laughs) Speaking of blowjobs, as we get back to this movie, my favorite kill of the movie, aside from the beheading at the office, which I think is just brilliant and it's played comically perfect, um, is the chainsaw through the guy's ass. Which is, I mean, eh, it's like a lot shaking. going on. It's a lot going on, and he's turned into like a male lollipop. Um, it was. It was ridiculous. There is, you are correct though, Richard. There is a point where the gore becomes so frequent and so similar in the movie that you're just like, you forget who died, who's how they died, what, how, what, I mean, what phallic thing did they kill them with this time, you know? Yeah. And, and wasn't there a point? Doesn't he, doesn't he kill his cousin? On accident, yeah, I just, no. I was yeah. gonna go, no, I just was he... going to say that. I was just going to say that. He get, they get done killing the aunt and uncle, and then he walks in. He's like, hey, guys, what's going on? He just cuts his face like in half. And he's like, did you just... Did you just kill him? He's like, no, no, he no, he was a demon. He's a demon. Yeah, he's like, like no, I heard him to say, get your souls. No, he was like, he said something about Satan, and they were like, no, dude, I didn't say anything. He's like, are you sure? He's like, no, I think you just murdered somebody. <laughs> that was a pretty funny. That was a pretty funny scene. <laughs> uh, but that's, I mean, I like that kind of comedy. I think it's fun. Oh I no, I do kind too. Of, like. I think it's kind of goofy. Uh, you know, the last 20 minutes of this movie does get so ridiculous. I mean, there is a chainsaw dance at the end of this movie with one of the guys just spinning around with chainsaws, literally taking out hordes of demons. And it feels kind of like a video game. You know, that's what the last bit of this movie feels like. It's just like a gory video game. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, so we get the uh, Zach becomes the Azul or whatever they call him. And then they end up killing Zach. Zach becomes a bad guy, uh, essentially. And he kills him. But then at the end, you hear his voice. So maybe he's not dead. I like that, too, because he's like, <laughs> and he's like, what? He's like, hey, man, just joking. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see what the name of their first song was? Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Intestines erection. Intestines. <laughs> that was another love, good yeah. scene where they're trying to name the band, and they just they're saying all the stupid names, and it's yeah. so good because that's like totally names that like bands <laughs> really would have. It's so dumb. There was one like uh, mutilation erection unicorn or something like. Yeah, they're just like spouting things off. 
Mutilation um, unicorn, I think, or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, I I enjoyed this type of comedy. They're losers, and I relate to them because I've always considered myself a bit of a loser, but I I like it that way. Um, and uh, it's like losers overcoming adversity and becoming the heroes, uh, it, which kind of goes a little bit more back into the Goonies type stuff. Um, so. As, if you're a gore fan and you're a metal fan, this is definitely going to be right up your alley. If you're not a metal fan, I don't think you're going to like this very much. Yeah, I think they're too. I, I don't think you would either. I mean, I mean, I don't hate metal, but I'm not like deep in it or anything. And even for me, I think some of the some of the things that are normal in that universe does not does not bode well for the mainstream. <laughs> yeah. You should get deep in it. I mean, I'm listening to Cannibal Corpse. I know. That's yeah, okay. I'll give you that. You I mean, it. on the ride home today, here, <clears throat> hold on. Let's see. Um, on the ride home today, I had a real Name bad day off. at work. I had a real bad day at work, so I listened to Devoured by Vermin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's off of their album Vile. <laughs> bile or vile? Bile. Oh, okay, vile. Okay. Because right cool. after devoured by vermin is mummified in barbed wire, um, <laughs> perverse suffering, disfigured bloodlands, puncture wound massacre, <laughs> a relentless beating, absolute <laughs> hatred, eaten from inside, <laughs> orgasm through <laughs> orgasm through torture. God, <laughs> Jesus Mon Christ. And Monolith. I'm pretty sure if my wife knew I was listening to this music. She would probably divorce me. <laughs> she like, what the hell are you listening to? <laughs> oh. oh, man. I'm going to anyway. listen. Listen, I'm back out in the field, and now I have to show people all this messed up stuff that I watch. I'm like, yeah, today <laughs> uh, they're like, what are you doing your podcast on? I'm like, uh, cannibal hooker vampires <laughs> they're like what Man, you just you need to stay over there you need to stay. i'm like you don't understand just say phantom of the mall eric's revenge and that seems mainstream enough I mean, like okay. what was the first one like <laughs> <laughs> do i have to Is say the, the first one to understand it <laughs> no you don't. um I'm glad I picked this overall just because, I mean, I'm glad I saw it. I've never seen it, and it's not like it. It's not a terrible movie by any means. It just has some downsides, and but that's okay. But the comedy is really solid, so uh, we should go ahead and uh, I will Rate give it. this. Yeah, I'll give it, I'll give it a 2.5. 2.5 chainsaws up asses. Um, I'm going to give this three and a half dildos out of the back of my skull. <laughs> Please, Jeff, give this two vibrators in the ear. <laughs> I'm gonna just give it a three. <laughs> three, three yeah. vibrators and two ears. Jesus. No, in one ear. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> you guys are talking about that double A, double V. <laughs> but uh, uh no i mean it's, it's worth it I, I mean and like i think jeff said last week it's available on literally any platform you have <laughs> or you and yeah. now that we've talked about this movie guys i do think it's important to remind everyone that the director was canceled for some very racy comments <laughs> oh really was he, was he? yes what can yeah. you say what he said? <laughs> no, look like it. I How racy? <laughs> it's because it's not about my type of people. It's not about... <laughs> but no, I cannot say it, and I will not. Um, no, he. Um, but listen, it's still important to remember that there was a whole cast and crew that worked on this movie and busted their asses and created something special uh he it may is weird right again, but oh, like we just we've come out of this jeepers creepers thing because in the past like three years we've gotten two really shitty movies one of them directed by the same guy as victor salva yeah yeah, yeah yeah 
And then apparently Jeepers Creepers Reborn, we're going to have to cover because I've just heard it's nightmare. It's abysmal. I have heard not that heard it's it. abysmal. I mean, there's not one positive thing that anybody says about this movie. Um, but anyway, like it is funny that we come out of this, like the these directors that get into trouble because, you know, like actors get into trouble and whatever. But it seems like when a director gets into trouble, it's like, oh, well, can't like their movie. It's like, well, I mean, it's not that you can't like their movie. I mean, like you can still like their movie, I think. Right. I don't know. Like, we still listen to Michael Jackson, so it's well. I mean, that's what I'm saying is like if if something if something horrible came out about a, a an author that you loved, and that was like J.K. Rowling. Okay. I mean, very much so. Like you know, yeah. she's come out and said some really bad things. So, but does that mean that even if you does that negate even if, her art? Yeah, well, but does that negate, like, so let's say the things that she said was about what you are or what you're into or what what you what you are, does does that mean that you can't like Harry Potter? That just seems stupid to me. Um, no. I, I think mean, I'm going to say musician, no. I think if it's a musician, it's a little bit different because the art is coming directly out of their mouth. Right, like they're maybe, so they're, but you know, may so maybe there's a little bit of gray room there. I just but think I don't it's know. like like what you like, and know, you know, know what. It's just like my my mom. Like my mom is like the most Christian person ever, and like you know, I'm I'm just not. I never really. I mean, I I am in the sense that I believe, but I mean, I'm not in the sense of like when I was 13, I was playing Mortal Kombat. And my mom's like, you know, it's not real. And I'm like, yeah, I, I get it. I, I'm, I'm there. I'm <laughs> yeah, not going to rip yeah. off somebody's head with their spine still attached or rip out their heart or blow fire out of my mouth and set somebody on fire. <laughs> but I've seen, you know, blow I mean, fire, so. but I mean, I'm just saying that you can like stuff, even though whatever it is that you like may, may have a negative connotation in a sense, you know, um, I don't know. It's just weird how some things are accepted. It's like at work. I'll put my playlist on and sometimes there'll be a song and there'll be a bad word like shit or damn or whatever. And uh, a lot of it's just pop stuff, whatever. And they'll be like, <gasps> but then everybody 10 minutes later is like, like a virgin touched for the very first time. Like we're all singing this weird song that is Did very Did you take the sexual. time to explain to them what the song means? <laughs> a la Quentin Tarantino from Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, you know, well, she's it, not a virgin, right? She's just yeah. fucked like one. She's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying is like so i was talking to my wife about that the other day she's like you got a point i was like it's just weird that we're all sitting around and some songs are just so so carved into our pop culture that well, you can sing it in front of your boss and it'd be okay and your boss yeah. sing it back and it's fine it's just weird. Well, all right. I'm boring, Jeff. Obviously, so we are. Going... <laughs> He's like, damn it, we're on video. <laughs> um. Okay. So, uh, thank you guys uh, once again for listening. Yeah, you can. No. Oh no. Oh, we lost no. them. I we just we made it a whole, a whole episode. episode without losing Matthew Henry. So anyway, we are at the very end. So that's good. Oh no! Wait. Uh oh, hold on, hold on, back, hold on. Back, I hold just on. wanted to come back to say one last thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody, follow us on Night of the Nerdy Laser, Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're trying to build that up. There's an interview with Mark Scheffler over there that will eventually come over to the audio feed. But if you want to see it right now, head on over to YouTube. Susan Lanier from Hills of Hot. Hills have eyes. Hills we'll have thighs. Next week. <laughs> and then <laughs> we have a trash talk episode that will be dropping on uh, Reactor 9 channel, Tingler Television, and our YouTube <laughs> channel. Um, and it's going to be a very special trash talk because it's going to be Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 5, The Toy Maker. And we're going to have special guest Brian Bremer, who is basically the star of that movie. Uh, he plays Pino, and it's great. And Brian's a great guy, and I can't wait.
for that. Um, it, that's going to be a very special episode uh, for Christmas. So until next time, Jeff, what should they do? Uh, fight demons with dildos and keep it bloody. Because he took my line. <laughs> <laughs> He because somebody's dildo has to. Because somebody <laughs> has to steal your mom's dildos and use them as weapons. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because somebody has to. <laughs>